All right. Thank you very much for that uh, introduction. And uh, also thank you to the KODW team for inviting us to speak at this conference. It's indeed a pleasure to be here on stage, but also a pleasure to be in Hong Kong for the first time. My name is uh, Matthias Svensson. I am creative director at Söderhavet, a strategic design agency based in Stockholm, Sweden, but working internationally. Except of having the honor to work with the brand Sweden, we are also awarded Agents of the Year in Sweden two times. But uh, enough said about me or Söderhavet, and let's go over to the, uh, what we're going to talk about for the coming 25 minutes, which is the challenges, the success factors. We're going to show cases and share insights, but we're also going to try to inspire you to a new approach to branding. All of these based on our work with the brand Sweden. So my name is Fredrik Roberts. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I work at the Swedish Institute. And the Swedish Institute is a government agency in Sweden under the Ministry for Foreign Affairs. And we have a number of different um, assignments, but one overall objective, which is to promote uh, awareness, interest, and build trust in Sweden in civil societies in other countries. So what we do is often referred to as public diplomacy or nation branding. And in our work, we work closely with the, the Swedish embassies and consulates all over the world, uh, as they have a unique understanding of the local audiences, which is necessary, of course, for us to package our communication to make it relevant in a local context. And in our work, we have a very broad range of communication activities, uh, ranging from traditional printed material of Sweden, touring exhibitions, all the way through to cutting edge digital communication, of which we're going to tell you more about. All right, so let's uh, jump into the first section of our speech, which is the challenges. And uh, start off by looking at the topic of our speech for, for just a little while. Uh, first of all, I think we need a definition of a brand, and that's the way we see it. It's the emotional and mental feeling that the public has when they see, thinks, or interacts with you or your business, basically. So is a strong brand for a nation important? Well, research tells us that there is a strong connection between the world's awareness and trust in a country and its ability to attract tourists, students, labor, and investments. So yes, even countries need a strong global image which leaves us with the digital era. And this is exciting, because as I see it, and as the speakers before has mentioned, there is a digitally driven paradigm shift happening right now, which brings uh, massive cha challenges for us who work with brands. And I would like to highlight two of them. Challenge number one is the accelerating pace of change. In design, in culture, and in technology, we can see that the life cycle of a trend or a fashion is shortening as the pace of change increases. Um, one could argue that continuous transformation has become the new normal. This makes it harder for us to predict uh, even the near future. It makes uh, market analysis less reliable as a basis for decision and it also makes long-term strategies impractical. And those are cornerstones in branding. So we need to start work in a different way. But how? Well, me and Frida, we, has not, we have not uh, yet discovered any recipe for long-time success. But we approach this challenge by having an agile and experimental approach to everything we do. I mean, for us, there are no exceptions to this rule, no excuses when we work, because we think and we believe that the winners of the future are those who dare to change when the fact changes or the data changes, those who uh, adopt to an agile mindset, and those who embrace continuous transformation. So challenge number two, as mentioned before, and probably will be mentioned many times uh, again during this conference, the rise of mobile. In Sweden, more than two-thirds of us have a smartphone. Uh, I spoke with the ambassador of United Arab Emirates last week, 
She told me that in Dubai, the average is more than two smartphones per person. And of course, you know this, you are part of this uh, movement also here in China and in Hong Kong. With mobile comes access to anything, anytime, anywhere. I can say this 10 times, because anything, anytime, anywhere. This is, this is like, this, this sounded like an utopia 10 years ago or five years ago. And now this is something that we take for granted. Can you, can you just see the scale and the speed of that transformation? I think it's wonderful. Add to this new behavior social media or a social layer where people instantly comment, rate, like, complains about the rooms in your hotel or the food at your restaurants. This is happening all the time. This is live reporting from everywhere. This makes it impossible to fool people. And to be honest, that has been the lifeline of marketers for the last 50 years. Thank God that time is over, because now is a time of transparency. So what could you do as a brand owner? I guess pretty much these things. Offer a great product. That's easy, right? Then add professional and kind customer support in all channels. And this is important, of course, with the mobile, the rise of mobile. And uh, from a brand perspective, the most important thing, I think, is that you take every chance to surprise or just, you know, uh, give your consumer or customer something unexpected, an act, of, an act of love or kindness or humor. Give them a story to tell. And I promise, they will love to tell it for you. And we think that is one of the cornerstones in Sculpt a Brand in the digital era. So, thank you, Matthias. So what does all this mean for a country brand like Sweden? A country far up in Northern Europe with, uh, with uh, only zero, oops, sorry. Can you help me? Can someone put that back on? I'll continue. Um, so what does this mean for Sweden? A country far up in the northern part of Europe and consisting of only 0.13% of the global population. And we know with a few buzzing cities and a beautiful accessible nature. Um, anyway. But we have no obvious tourist uh, destination, no pyramids, no Eiffel Towers. So the competition is fiercer for attention than ever before, and it's getting harder and harder for brands, including country brands like Sweden, to cut through that noise of a global arena. Today, Sweden has a pretty good reputation out there, but having said that, we do face some big challenges. First, we know that the further away you get from Sweden, the lower is the awareness and the knowledge of Sweden, thus also the trust in what we have to offer. Secondly, we often encounter stereotypical and outdated images of Sweden, and not at all based on what Sweden of today has to offer. And thirdly, we also know that the awareness and knowledge of Sweden is actually decreasing among, among children and young people. And we consider this, of course, very serious because they are the decision makers of tomorrow. And they are the potential tourists of tomorrow. So I think we can all agree that working in communication 2014 is amazing, but hugely challenging. And we were looking for that secret recipe of effective and cost-efficient communication. And Matthias and I haven't found the holy grail, but we have identified three success factors in our experience in Sweden 
and we would like to share these three success factors with you. First, quickly. Number one, internal coordination. Two, integrated communication. And three, inclusion and co-creation. We're going to go through all through three of them in more detail and also illustrate them through some recent cases. The first one, internal coordination, by which we mean coordinating and collaborating with other official organizations um, that are uh, involved in the same area, which is promoting Sweden in other countries. So, in 1995, the Council for the Promotion of Sweden Abroad was established. And this is a forum for dialogue and collaboration between Swedish official organizations, all involved in the area of promoting Sweden in different countries. But these organizations, of course, have slightly different focuses or aims, such as attracting tourism, of course, uh, business, students, etc. But they all try to, when relevant, of course, to coordinate their work in order to maximize the overall result of all their communications activities put together, and by doing so, also ensuring a consistent and cost-efficient communications. Which brings us to success factor number two, which is integra integrated communication, or the benefits of having an integrated brand communication platform. And I'll explain. In 2007, the Council for Promotion of Sweden launched a joint brand platform. All in all, some 600 people were involved in workshops, etc., designing and uh, describing and defining our core values. Sweden's overall distinctive features, the values that stand out, and in a way, what Sweden has to offer. At the heart of the platform is the all-embracing term progressive. This is not a word we use to describe ourselves. Rather, this is what we want others to feel when they think about Sweden. Progressive is expressed by our four core values. Innovative means seeing things from a different angle. Open, for us, is celebrating the variety of people, cultures, and lifestyles. Caring for us, safeguarding and protecting each individual and showing compassion for the weakest in the society. And authenticity is expressed in honesty, reliability, and in informality. We consequently boost Sweden's image by acting in a way that highlights these four core values. To this integrated brand communication platform, Söderhavet, together with Sweden, uh, just recently launched a unified global visual identity for Sweden. We are sure, uh, our belief is, that a strong identity is built over time. Um, so, for us, it was important to find a sort of foundation in the identity that we knew could support Sweden's identity and brand communication platform for a long time to come. And we converged on an obvious choice. The absolute strongest symbol for recognition of our country, the Swedish flag. In its exact same proportion and colors as it's been looking since 1562. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> our identity is divided into three sections. This is actually uh, an architecture that shows how we think modern design programs should be constructed. Section number one contains the flag, but we added the word mark Sverige, which is Sweden, Swedish for Sweden together with a local translation specific for the country that we are communicating in. This is our logotype. And we expect this part of the identity to remain unchanged for the coming 50 years or more. And this is a long time ahead. Because we 
truly believes that the longer this part of the identity remains the same, the stronger it will become. Section number two in our identity is supposed to be updated, adjusted in eight to 10 years. To this section, we added a customly designed typeface from scratch, Sweden Sans. Of course, to create uniquity, but also to go perfectly in tone with our tone of communication. We also selected blue and yellow from the flag to be our first long-term primary colors. Well aware that these could change without affecting the flag or the logo type in the future. Section number three, and this is the interesting thing, is supposed to be in constant transformation. It is here that we encourage short-term trends, local adaptions. It is here that designers have the most freedom and the most tools to be creative and to add a uh, progressive and contemporary aura to their work. Our integrated identity is designed to last 50 years or more. It is channel agnostic, because so is Brand Sweden, and it loves to be in constant transformation in tune with the digital era. So we are now at the third and last success factor, which is inclusion and co-creation, by which we mean making brand communications more democratic. Uh, creating something together with uh, brand ambassadors, target audiences, and others. And we live in a network age where people actually trust strangers far more than brand owners. And research tells us that in terms of brand advice, for instance, when you go online to buy something, people, seven out of 10 people, actually trust complete strangers, whereas only one out of 10 trust the brand owners. Who do you trust? Who do you listen to when you, for instance, book, plan and book a trip? You probably check with family and friends, colleagues. And then my guess would be that you go online and check online reviews, like TripAdvisor that Stefan mentioned before. Am I right? I thought so. So in the last few years, we have seen a paradigm shift, a complete power shift power of control and brands over, over brands have shifted from the brand owners to the brand users. And given all this context, why not let other people do the talking? Why not let brand ambassadors and target audience and others get involved in your brand communications? And this makes your communications more authentic, uh, more humanized, and it creates an emotional connection. And emotional connection is very important in brand communications. So in terms of uh, co-creation, that is something that relies on the belief that today's customers are no longer only passive consumers of content, product, and services but that they actually want to be part of the creative process. They want to uh, contribute and influence in order to create value. So yes, there are a lot of challenges, but there are also ways of turning these channel, cha challenges into opportunities. And the three cases that we're now gonna go through with you have all addressed and resolved these challenges but in different ways. Right. And the first project that we would like to show is called Demo Creativity. And it is a project that relies, I would say, totally on inclusion and co-creation. Basically, it's an online platform that crowdsources creative game ideas. It is an open invitation to people and gamers around the world to come up and share game ideas that they think that the world is missing, that they would like to see turned into reality. For me, this is a perfect example of how we incorporate our core value, that we act on them, and that we use the Sweden identity to show that it is Sweden that is behind the project. The result has been great. 
I mean, it's been generating scores of articles in traditional media and also reaching over 8 million people in social media. So I would just like to show you a short movie. It's a one minute film that introduces you to the concept. We believe democracy is the mother of creativity. Access and openness are essential for ideas to flourish. But although there are many developed democracies in the world, Sweden stands out in terms of creativity. The reason is not only our freedom of expression, it is our freedom of impression, being open to new ideas, to other cultures, and to different perspectives. In fact, our culture shares the same foundation as creativity, being receptive. The Swedish initiative Democrativity is an open invitation to creators all over the world to contribute with underrepresented expressions of creativity. Join us at democrativity.com and help give a voice to all ideas, just as democracy gives a voice to all people. Okay, that's Democreativity presented with a fantastic voice, I think. Uh, the next project that we would like to mention is uh, Swedish Moment. And uh, recently, uh, or earlier this year, uh, Söderhavet, together with the Swedish tourism organization Visit Sweden, launched a series of local websites in uh, Germany, in Denmark, and in the Netherlands initial, initially, uh, where we asked people to share pictures and stories of their trip to Sweden. But our aim was not just to, to let them share stories and special moments in Sweden, but to do so with their fellow countrymen, with whom they have the most trusting relationships. In other words, we localized crowdsourcing of holiday tips, highlighting the experiences that resonates the most in each community. The objective, to provide an authentic and diversified image of Sweden. An image that might not show up in traditional tourism advertising. So we're now at the third and last case we would like to share with you, which is Curators of Sweden, Sweden's official communication channel on Twitter, at Sweden. And this project has been the most inspiring, intense, and frightening experience in my professional life so far. And I think you will understand why. So in December 2011, Sweden was the first country in the world to hand over complete uncensored control of an official communication channel at Sweden on Twitter. Again, the brand platform for Sweden. It was exactly these core values that we wanted to prove in practice through curators of Sweden. We wanted to go from talking about Sweden as open authentic, caring, and innovative to actually demonstrating it in practice. Allow me to show a, a short case video that um, will explain the whole project. In Sweden, something unusual is happening. Normally, a country that has a Twitter account uh, has that account run by an official of the government. Not so in Sweden. Uh, the people there, are, are actually in charge. We became the first country in the world to let go of an official communication channel and hand it over to our citizens. Every week, someone in Sweden is at Sweden, sole ruler of the world's most democratic Twitter account. For seven days, he or she shares their everyday life, private opinions and general reflections. After that, someone else does the same, but differently. 
This is a simple way to give tips and advice on where to go on your holiday in Sweden. And a great way to interact with people around the world. You can come with us to a regular day at work. Or hang out with us on our free time, both in the busy city and out in the wild. The response was overwhelming. We attracted over 65,000 followers from 120 countries and started thousands of conversations. Sweden trended on Twitter worldwide, sparking discussions on transparency in social media and how technology can be used for democracy. The project has been featured all over the world and after six months the PR value is already 40 million dollars. Some think it's just a clever PR campaign. Others believe that it's a beacon of free speech in a time when we need it more than ever. For us, it's the only way to paint a fair picture of Sweden for the rest of the world. Swede by Swede. Tweet by Tweet. As is often the case, the essence of Curator of Sweden goes way back before the launch in December 2011. Sweden has a long and proud history of democratization, and it's that tradition the Curator of Sweden is built on. We have companies, movements, organizations that have democratized the way we live, what we wear, how we communicate with each other, and how we consume popular culture. So far, we have had over 100 curators painting 100 different images of Sweden. Of course, <clears throat> the result is not one perfect streamlined image of Sweden, but several. And we believe that this actually presents the diversity that Sweden of today is built on. Tweet by tweet, curator by cu curator, we're building an authentic, diversified and updated image of Sweden of today. So this is, of course, a high-risk project. Has it generated any incidents? Yes, indeed, it has. But we have lived through them. And personally, I believe it's not all the things that have gone sm smoothly, but actually the incidents, the problems, the challenges, they have tested and validated the strength behind the project. And in terms of return on investment, it has been one of our most successful uh, projects so far. Uh, we have also won uh, more than 45 national and international communications awards with Grand Prix in Cannes as its crown jewel. But most importantly, we have managed through Curator Sweden to reach out, connect, and interact with people in over 120 countries all over the world and provided for them an authentic, updated, and diversified image of our country. So we are really running out of time here, but uh, we would anyway like to share some insights with you, insights with you uh, based on our work with the brand Sweden. And we go quickly through this. Takeaway number one is always stay true to your brand and to your core values. And we cannot stress this enough. This should underpin every aspect of what you say or do. My recommendation is, of course, you know your core values, but does your agency know them? Make sure they understand them, not only know about them. I'm sure you all heard the expression, show, don't tell. I would like to take that one step further. Do, don't tell. Let your walking do your talking. Prove your values in practice. And this is the very core idea of the project Curators of Sweden. Design for transformation, and as I said before, I think modern design programs should be able to adopt to the changing world around uh, technology, culture, trends, uh, and also be able to adopt to new platforms. Instead of focusing too much on pumping out traditional brand messages, focus on the question, how can we add value to our target audience? So in that sense, it's actually that experience of your brand, the whole experience that is the brand message. 
So then, of course, consequently, make sure to brand the experience. And that means every touch point along the way that you have with your customers. Okay, only uh, two uh, takeaways left. Uh, give your consumers a story to tell, and uh, they will love to tell it for you. Make it viral. Uh, and as we said in the project with uh, Swedish Moments, viral doesn't have to mean go global. You could also be market specific in your viral activities. Humanize your content. Involve more real people in your brand communications. People listen to people. And it, it makes your communications credible, authentic, and connect with your target audience. And going back again to Curator Sweden and involving ordinary citizens and the effect of that and compare that to the effect of having a government agency talking and communicating about Sweden. It's a completely different effect. And for me and for us, maybe the most uh, important takeaway, uh, be brave, fail regularly, or you have not tried hard enough. Um, I can see that uh, in our work with uh, Frida and Swedish Institute, uh, courage has been the most important ingredients, I think. Um, and with that, uh, I would just like to say that uh, inno innovation requires not only creativity, but also courage. Okay. And if you'd like to find out more about our projects and our um organizations, please visit uh, the website. I'm not sure you can yet. Yeah, you can actually see them there. And uh, with that, I would like to thank you for your patience and open up for potential questions, if we have time for that, that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, I have lots of questions. I don't know about the audience. Are there any keen questions in the audience before we begin? Okay, I, that was fascinating, guys. Thank you very much. I'm really um, curious. The idea of friending a country on Twitter is fascinating. How do you pick the person to do the tweeting, and how did those curators of Sweden add value to brand Sweden? So you can. We have a nomination process where anybody can nominate anybody, and each curator which has had their week is asked to nominate a few people, and then we have a committee that looks at the uh, nominated people. And there's a very few criteria you have to be able to, to tweet, mm -hmm. experience of that. Um, and we also look at the, the we want to, to provide a broad picture image of Sweden. So from that sense, we look at uh, gender, geography, uh, competence, area of interest, and then we choose our curators. Wow. Yeah. Brilliant. And if you look at the core values, I would say that you asked in what way does this contribute to the brand, mm -hmm. the idea that we, the very idea that we let go of control in itself is a demonstration in practice of our core values. Absolutely. Fantastic. Any questions from, this, from out there? I'll keep going then. Um, <laughs> how do you manage the multitude of stakeholders um, in branding a nation? That has to be one of the most difficult things. It makes, I think, probably everyone else's job seem incredibly easy. Yeah. I actually, before joining uh, Swedish Institute, which is a government agency, obviously, I, I came from the agency side, and I have to say that I learned a lot about politics <laughs> in, in, in this. There's, there's, uh, you have to get everybody on board for the implementation process, and we actually did get everybody on board. You did? Mm? Using some of the techniques you talked about towards the end, about co-creation and... In a sense, yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. One of the first initiatives mm -hmm. when we started working with the identity was that we gathered all organization and just had a conversation about which part of the identity could we unite under. Mm -hmm. So then we decided for the top hierarchy, the logotype, the flag, and so on. So yes, of course. Mm -hmm. OK. Am I missing anyone? I can't see very well from up here. No. Hi. You know, um, your Curate Sweden project is really interesting. And um, you know, the sweets by sweets, tweets by tweets, you know, you, you, you talk about. Yeah. And how, how do you cultivate, you know, this relationship? Because I'm just thinking about, you know, back in Hong Kong, you know, if, if we, you know, to, um, courageously do something like this, 
and we will not only have switch by switch, but we would definitely have a lot more. You know, it um, 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 could be critical sharing and, and things like that. You know, how do you how do you demo creativity, but do it in such a positive, you know, a progressive manner? I'm not sure. I, did you understand the question? Uh, Sorry, how I was we, over there for you know how to you stimulate mark. you know this uh, uh, progressiveness you know mm -hmm. using your 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 uh, uh, sharing by tweets you know the the, the sweet moments mm. in your platform because in Hong Kong it's freedom of expression you know it's, uh, if you're open up to yes. curating you know mm -hmm. designing by all then um, there will be sweet moments there will be sour moments there will be a lot of things yeah so, so uh, going back to curator Sweden there has been incidents of course. Because we do not control and we don't manage uh, the content at all. And we don't even comment on specific tweets. So the, the rule is you're not allowed to break the, the, the law. That's it. And you're not allowed to promote your product and services. Apart from that, you can do whatever you like. Uh, and you know, intercultural communication on global scale is very interesting because it's not only the language barrier, it's social norms, religion, uh, tab taboo topics in certain cultures. So, of course, it has generated some pretty big incidents, I have to say. Yeah. Thank you. Just following on from that, there's a, pot I mean, a potential crazy media crisis, right, from allowing freedom of speech. Even if you say to people, you can only tweet about this, you can't tweet about that, how do you, even, how do you risk mitigate that one, or do you not? But we don't tell them that. I mean, they can. They to just shut them down. They represent they... themselves, and uh, when they are there, they don't. In, they in the beginning, we often got the question: So does Sweden endorse what the curators say? And no, we endorse the right to express your ideas, new thoughts, and I mean, no, it's very often trivial things, uh, everyday life in Sweden. And sometimes there's we have had, for instance, one incident where we had uh, one curator um, criticizing very strongly our. Minister for Foreign Affairs from an official communication channel in front of the whole world, mm. uh, which is, from a Swedish perspective, not that dramatic. But of course, from an international perspective, that's pretty dramatic. So, but our 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 Minister for, for Foreign Affairs was just like, was no big deal. He's a very very um, experienced um, experienced in social media. So final question, I've just had a sign that says time's up, but final question, what do you think the opportunity is? Sorry, I'm going to interrupt with somebody's got their hand up over there, so I'll let you ask the final question. Uh, my name is uh, Wilfred Moore, I'm the Consul General of the Netherlands. I'm very impressed uh, by, your, uh, by the way you brand Sweden. I had a question on, on the creators of, uh, of Sweden. Uh, when when the, you ask the uh, citizens to post tweets uh, for a certain amount of period, I imagine this generates a lot of discussion and retweets. And, and who is taking care of that? Is, is that the, the, the citizen himself or then does the government do that? It's the citizens themselves. We do not interfere. So that's the whole, whole idea. And um, as of today, we have never had to to take down a tweet or throw a curator out, out because we have that right. Should they not follow the rules, uh, then we would do that. So we, we follow carefully. And of course, as, as with taste, some, 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 day, some weeks uh, there are, it's more, more um, intense and other weeks it's, it's more quiet depends on the curators and, and also this is the whole idea of providing a broad image of a country. So to end very quickly, what do you think the opportunity is going forward for Sweden to taking this approach? Well, continue along the side, being open and flexible and agile, looking out for new opportunities. I mean, maybe Twitter is not relevant in a year. No. But I also think that uh, the mindsets, mindset on acting on our core values instead of talking about them. That is a big lesson learned, yeah. I think. Fantastic. Okay. I think that's a great note to end on. Thank you guys very much.